went into the palace garden. But Haman yes. <laughs> stayed behind to beg for his life from Queen Esther, for he ah. saw that ah. harm was determined against him by the king. And the king returned from the palace garden to the place where they were drinking wine, just as Haman <laughs> was falling was onto the couch where Esther was. And the king said, will he even assault the queen in my presence? So Sam, what are they talking about here? Lots. <laughs> what do you mean lots? They're talking about lots. <laughs> and there's lots to talk about. There is. All right, that's Ma. a Hebrew joke. <laughs> so they're talking about Purim or Purim, yeah. which in Hebrew means lots. Lots. No, that's not Hebrew. That's English, actually. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's actually a, a biblical festival. Yeah. And but it's not in the Torah. Nope. It's a later. Yeah. Uh, well, it's celebration of what the salvation and deliverance of Israel. Yeah, found in the book of Esther. Uh -huh. So right at the end there, you can see that they instituted a big deal party. A big deal party to be celebrated every year, and yeah. it's still going on. And it's customary to dress up yep. and hide your identity. Yep. When I lived in Jerusalem, I still remember this one guy was dressed up as Daniel Boone. <laughs> In, in Israel? In Jerusalem. <laughs> you have a coonskin cap. Yeah, the oh whole thing. Buckskin, and his, there was another, like, several people with him. They're all dressed up, <clears throat> probably in their 40s. No and way. And they had a scroll, <laughs> a Hebrew scroll, because it's called the Megillah, mm -hmm. the story of Esther. And they're reading the scroll of Esther, just some random cafe. Daniel Boone reading the scroll of Esther. And it's customary to, when Haman's yeah. name is said... Uh, Boo it out. Boo it out. Hiss it, hiss it, out. it out. So that's why we were booing and hissing. Yeah. And then when the story, when you read the story and you say Esther, it's... Ah, oh, the queen. And then so. Mordecai. Yay! Hey! Yeah. <laughs> so thus the interaction mm -hmm. of actually the people they were, they were yeah. entering into that. For sure. Yeah. On the 14th day of the month of Adar. Day for gladness and feasting. We got Grogger right. As a holiday. Lechaim. <laughs> What's Lechaim mean, Tom? To life. To life. Celebrating life, like because yeah. they, well, were delivered and they didn't get murdered by uh, the Persians. So pretty yep. big deal. Really big deal. Yeah. They were able to defend themselves and right. live. And it actually says to celebrate, to give. Gifts yeah. and to drink. That's why everybody's drinking. It's a very festive occasion. You think the situation among the Gentiles isn't difficult? Of course it is. Walking doesn't have to be. <laughs> oh. Oh. My hair. Or it does. Oh, Hades. What did he say? Oh, oh. Hades? Oh. <laughs> he did not. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> I think that was a thing. <laughs> Thank you. I know what blood looks like. Oh, wow. Ooh. Just go with her. I'm slowing you down anyway. Are you suggesting you'll stay behind and die? <laughs> Maybe. What? Andrew seems not as anxious. Mm. You're right. He's, uh, he's kind of chill a little mm -hmm. bit. He's actually helping Philip. Phil, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Friends call him Phil. Yeah. <laughs> they actually, they're, they're kind of into nicknames. They are chosen. Have nicknames. you noticed so that? I'm going to start calling Philip Phil. All right. Phil? So All right. That's here's, fine. Here's to you. Phil, Phil. and Andy. <laughs> <laughs> no? <laughs> Deal. <laughs> what happened at the Decapolis? Our teaching. We made a mess. We did not intentionally create a mess. We preached the words of our rabbi. And some people took issue. Where is the vinegar? Oh, it's on the bottom table to the right. I, I rearranged the bottles. The way you had them organized before was very inefficient. The capitalist is in full-scale meltdown, and you're over here rearranging cabinets. How would he know? Why do you need vinegar? To disinfect the wound. Why, so it doesn't spread through my mortal body and kill me? Actually, yes. <laughs> oh, Hades. Uh... You, you still haven't told me what you did to the Decapolis? Not what we... <laughs> oh, Hades! <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Why 
I don't know what it's to kinda do like, with that. It's kind of like Joe's, uh, and I don't know what to do with that. Well, you, it's kind of like uh, you know, put it all in. The, it's going to Hades in a handbag, mm-hmm. right? Sheol in a satchel. Satchel. <laughs> When Hades oh. freezes over, <laughs> wow! They're 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 pulling it out. They are pulling it out. Oof. The Gentiles are curious now. This was all foretold by the prophet Isaiah. Do we remember? Behold, my servant, whom I have chosen, my beloved, with whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he will proclaim justice to the Gentiles, and in his name the Gentiles will hope. I've been studying the genealogy of Jesus. Sounds exciting. Mm -hmm. And there appeared to be many Gentiles in his own ancestry. Rahab was a prostitute in Jericho who was married to Salmon, who fathered Boaz. And and Boaz married Ruth, who was a Moabite. We could just let Jesus decide for himself. Exactly. That's... Thank you, Maddie. They are pointing out something really pretty cool here, Mm -hmm. and that is that the genealogy of Yeshua in Matthew chapter 1, they're intentionally highlighting yeah. these Gentile women. Mm. I mean, it barely mentions women at all, and the mm-hmm. ones that are mentioned are almost all mm-hmm. Gentiles. Right. So this is screaming hmm. uh, Jew-Gentile unity and just that God cares for the nations, yeah. and they're bringing that out here, you know, talking about this mm-hmm. heart for the Decapolis where, you know, the Gentiles live, mm-hmm. and so. Oh, Lord. It's work. I continue looking at this. And then the irony also is that Tamar here mm-hmm. is in the genealogy and she was had a child with Perez. Mm-hmm. No. She, uh, that was Perez. Her, that yeah. was Perez yeah. that she had with Judah. Mm-hmm. So kind her of interesting. father-in-law. Yeah. yeah. Uh, awkward story. Really yeah. awkward story. <laughs> but and then Tamar here is a yeah. Gentile and they're showing you that tension. Mm-hmm. So they're they're uh, they may be reading the genealogy on purpose and bringing it out for, for us. For sure. They're they're kind of chosen. <laughs> they're towing a line here. <laughs> Jew Gentile unity right. with distinction and tensions mm-hmm. and I mean this is it's difficult stuff. Right. You get to the book of Acts and it's like they're trying to figure this stuff out. And that's true. That's a big deal. What Gentiles are coming in? This is because it's crazy, you know. <laughs> what in the world do we do with the Gentiles? Yep. That was the big question that really you see throughout Paul's writings, yep. especially. Yep. So yep. it seems like to me <clears throat> that it's almost like the chosen had their Bibles open when they're writing this. Oh. You know? I mean, good. <laughs> yeah. You better. Nice work. <laughs> <laughs> and their Septuagint's open as well. Mm-hmm. Say what? That's right. Say what? They're really looking into it here. Is it to a what? Mm. <laughs> Whoa. That. that was cool. You could see the, the Minerot up there. Mm. I didn't know until more recent history how big they actually were. I mean, they were like, how big what were they? Do you remember? I do, actually. Yeah? Well, 84 feet. 84 feet? Roughly. What? If I remember right. So... 84 feet, that's huge! Actually, I think, at least according to the Talmud, they would only put them up during Sukkot. Oh, really? And... But maybe... Did, maybe they have a really big garage to, like, store them in or something? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe they're there all the time. I, yeah. I thought they were only there during... Maybe it's just that they're, they light them brighter during Sukkot? I don't know how that would work, but... Uh, according to the Talmud, they would actually take the priest's um, worn out garments mm-hmm. and that's what they would make like for the wicks or something oh, like that. Oh, that's cool. I've never heard um, that. But there was four <laughs> according to uh, what I remember and mm-hmm. that would light up the temple court. And, wow. Yeah. That's so cool. Mm-hmm. 84 feet tall. But actually, now that I'm looking at those, those aren't menorahs. Those are, well, they're menorahs, but they're Hanukkah menorahs. Oh, because there's... Four there on each are, side. Yeah, so I'm wondering why they're Hanukkiahs and not minor, like Minerva. seven branch menorahs. Right. But this is uh, Purim, which is after Hanukkah, mm-hmm. a few months. It's so. like kind of like leaving the Christmas lights on the house, or. Well. <laughs> That's exactly what they did. 
They accidentally left up the Hanukkah lights. Ah, <clears> shoot! <throat> Swap them out, it's already Purim! <laughs> you could have been arrested. What possessed you to cross into our quarter? I'd gone everywhere else. This was the last part of town I thought could distract me, you know? The novelty of it. You couldn't drink yourself into distraction at the hammer? What is this? It's nothing to worry about, Livia. But it's not yet the end of the day. I needed a private place to interrogate this Jew who was trespassing. I, I mean no harm. Are you the doctor? The what? Gaius said there was a Jewish doctor or something that might be able Olivia, to... Olivia, please furnish this man with one of my cloaks. I don't want any more trouble while I... What does he mean, doctor? The plot thickens. Mm. <laughs> now, of course, doctor comes from the word teacher. Did you know that? What? Like, yeah, For real? In Latin, doctor actually means teacher. I, yeah, I'm, I'm learning. Keep yeah. going. So the first doctors uh, in history, they were actually Bible teachers. Mm. And then that, they end up, you know, appropriating <laughs> the name Black doctor American. for the medicinal world and then many other uh, things. I yeah. did not know that. This is my son, Marius, and Evo is our... Yeah, 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 you mentioned uh, the son of your servant. He's my best friend. He's really sick. All right, Marius, that's enough. Let's go to your room. Jewishness isn't contagious, Livia. So, he already knows our whole story? Not all of it. We'll take the back door into the alley and sneak you out of side entrance. This way. It seems like that's the first time where Simon's like, are they a little bit interested right. in Yeshua? Right. They're talking about him at home here, right. you know? Right. So I think he's cluing in a little bit. Right. And mm -hmm. he's obviously, you know, more than a sympathizer now. Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. like he's talking about him at home. He's got a sick kid. He's mm -hmm. interested in, you know, encountering Yeshua. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on. It's just a matter of time just at this point. Just a matter of time. Just. <laughs> that is the one... Bummer. It's like we know it's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> We've read it. Right. You know, it's like it's happening. No, but, but it's still pretty fun. It's fun it's fun yeah. the the dramatic setup. That is one thing right. about this that makes it kind of fun. Is like yeah. you get to create some fun backstory, right. you know. And, exactly. And, and make it dramatic. They're real but, people, real yeah. stories. Yeah, so. for sure. And you ha you have to imagine the 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 backstory behind a Roman centurion that was willing to come to Jesus. Yeah. It's gotta be a dramatic story. It's a dramatic story. That means that means he's heard about him. He's may have heard him teach. Right. He's starting to wrestle with it. There's a mm -hmm. lot of context happening, yeah. and then they get desperate enough to do something about exactly. it. Exactly. It's like, right. man, that's uh, those are life changing moments. And mm -hmm. then obviously when he gets healed, spoiler right. alert, right? It's gonna change their life forever. Yeah. You know. So. Yeah, it's that desperation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Still like that today. Many people obviously turn to God in For desperate sure. moments. For right? sure. So. Yeah. Benjamin was not his original name. Rachel died moments after giving birth to him. Mm -hmm. And as her soul was departing, she called him ben Ani, son of my son. Later on, Jacob changed it to Benjamin, son of my right hand. That was kind of him. Do you have any land, assets, savings? Anything you can sell off to fulfill this unthinkable song? In thinking back on it, I think old Emma Rachel was correct. So he was talking about uh, Rachel mm -hmm. and Benjamin being born, mm -hmm. and you know, Rachel dies yeah. giving birth, mm -hmm. and she gives birth in you know, Bethlehem yeah. Ephrata. Which is the same right area where the shepherds came yep. and announced Yeshua, and then Yeshua is born there, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But and then the two names here that he's talking about, mm -hmm. Ben Oni and Ben Yamin, mm -hmm. like those are two names that define and describe the two aspects of Yeshua. Mm. Ben Oni is like the suffering son, son of suffering, and then you have. 
Benjamin, which is son of wow. the right hand. Wow. The right hand of the father. So you have this like the suffering servant and you have the the king, the Davidic, you know. Shui. So and then Yeshua in Bethlehem. In Bethlehem. Yeah. And so Yeshua, <laughs> he's when he's born, mm-hmm. he's continuing the family line. Yep. There's this continuity mm-hmm. of the children of Israel. Yep. In the very location, even wow. of where Yeshua is born. Wow, just um, just unbelievably amazing. It's, there's like there's so many things that point to right. how amazingly orchestrated the story is. Mm-hmm. Right, I mean, the bread of life. He is the bread of life. He's born in Bethlehem, the house of bread. Right, right? that's just another one. You mm-hmm. know, it's like there's just there's just so much. That's so cool, son of suffering, son of my right hand, and mm-hmm. that's where Yeshua is born. Man, that's cool. So I take no pleasure in doing this. I have no choice but to place you under arrest. I understand. Thank you. May I gift you? Gift? Uh, gratuity. For your wonderful service and kindness in listening to me go on. It is not customary. In truth, these are the most valuable things I own. An asset? More valuable than gold, more precious than rubies. I may be able to help you liquidate it. We could work together. A ledger coming up this short on a balance this big reflects very poorly on my performance. (laughs) These are one of a kind. They date back to the first exile. Made from the world's most exquisite tequila. So he was referring to the snails. Mm-hmm. I don't even remember the name, taki something he said. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. And those snails are where they get the, the blue dye. Yeah, the color, right? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And for, I don't even know how many years, 1800 years, mm-hmm. the snails weren't around. They couldn't find them. Hmm. And then about a hundred years ago, in the Mediterranean, on the coast of Israel, somewhere in there, they started finding those same exact snails again. <laughs> and so then they started making the blue dye for the tzitziot. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I did not know Right that. around the time that right. the Jewish people start coming back to the land in, in <laughs> thousands, you know, thousands of immigration... Isn't that amazing? It's like a a natural sign and wonder Mm -hmm. of the Jewish people returning to their land. The rebirth of Israel. Wow. Yeah. Pretty awesome. That's so cool. Right. That's so cool. (laughs) Whoa. That man wanted you to have his faith. That was the last thing he had, his most valuable thing in the world. And you have it. That man wanted you to be Jewish again, and you are. It was his dying wish. Why would he want that for someone like me? Because sometimes God sends a dove. A dove? I never told anyone this before, but... The day I met Jesus was the same day I was ready to end my life. What? I was going to leap from a great height when a dove caught my eye. I couldn't resist following it. And it led me to the place where I met Jesus. That old man was your dove. <laughs> Our lives have often been painful, yes? <laughs> so we think life is full of scarcity and not abundance. But then there are those times when Out of nowhere, somehow the world expresses its longing to be whole. 
and suddenly God steps in. And we are pulled out of our blindness. We are invited into redemption. I know I was. I know you are. Huh. I don't know what to say. Even if you don't say anything. <laughs> I mean. I know you have felt unworthy. Matthew, I know you felt that one day. But it's time to add a new accessory to your clothes. <laughs> or rather, an old one. <laughs> I love how <clears throat> they're connecting, you know, his faith in Yeshua mm -hmm. as him coming back and uh, embracing his Jewish identity. That's, I'm so glad you said it that way. That I mean, they're yeah. doing a good job of showing that, you know, loving Yeshua and being Jewish mm. are very much uh, yeah. coherent and... They're not opposed to one another. No, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, like yeah, that yeah. flies against the face of so much of the the last 2,000 years. Right. And so, you know, I was thinking, you know, this emphasis on the tzitzio, you know, we had the episode mm -hmm. of the woman with the issue of blood. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about how throughout the last 2,000 years, how few people, Gentile Christians, I would say, actually knew that Jesus was actually Jewish. And so, like, the Chosen's portrayal of that scene. Yeah. And even in this scene here, also just, like, how that would have changed Christian history mm -hmm. if Christians would have known that Jesus was wearing tassels, wearing mm -hmm. fringes, that he was Jewish. I right. mean, that simple thing that they've portrayed. Right. I think it will change Jewish Christian relations. Yeah. Like yeah. it's it's a turning point. Right. Like people it's like the world knows yeah. that he's Jewish now. Right. Like so I would say millions yeah. know now who many may not have known a couple mm. of years ago. Right. That's extraordinary. I, I couldn't yeah. thank the chosen enough just yeah, yeah, for yeah. that right there. That's that's huge. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely huge. Yeah. Yeah. And and what the Lord is all about, one of the things the Lord is all about, is bringing in this family of unique people, Jewish and from the nations, and saving them and bringing them into his family, and yet they're retaining their identity right. of who they are, who the Lord created them to be, right. and he wants this big, beautiful, diverse family. Right. And part of that is this recognition that he's the Jewish Messiah. Right. It it's a it's a paradigm shift and mm -hmm. it's I mean it's something that we went through. It's mm -hmm. something that lots of people need to go through and right. lots of people like you said are going through and mm -hmm. it's a it's a really cool thing. And so yeah, like you're saying like Chosen's doing a good job of like this is this is congruent right with the 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 gospel story. Mm -hmm. Is that he came as a Jew he is a Jewish man. He's a Jewish Messiah. Right. And the disciples, the apostles that went forth and spread this message right. to the Decapolis and beyond were Jewish men. And that they don't have to become Gentiles. Exactly. Because they love Jesus right. and follow Jesus. Right. They just get to be and really need to be who God created them right. to be. Whatever that looks like. Whoever you are. You know, yeah. different ethnic heritage that you have and the specific calling that you have. Right. Uh, and then so. later they get to fight for m maintaining Jewish identity and, and maintaining Gentile identity. Like, stay stay the way you were when you were called, mm -hmm. as Paul puts it in 1 Corinthians. Yeah. 
Yeah, you're right. Paul says, 1 Corinthians 7, he says, This is the rule in all the churches. Mm -hmm. If you're circumcised, remain circumcised. If you're uncircumcised, remain uncircumcised. Yeah. Remain in the calling in which you have been chosen. Exactly. Like it's, I mean, it's really clear in the text, right. actually. Right. If you're Jewish, remain Jewish. Gentile, remain Gentile. And this is a rule. This is actually part of the Paul's gospel. Yeah. This is what he is, yeah. how he's imparting this, uh, well, I would call it, biblical messianic worldview mm -hmm. to the known, you know, Roman Empire at the time. Honorable you kept him on when his mother died. He's not just a servant. Yeah, your son said they were best friends. It's like, it's like having a brother, I understand. They are. Half-brothers. Does she know? Uh, we don't talk. We don't talk about it. Um, you know, for Roman men, it is a more common thing. It's common for lots of men. It's just it's more accepted in your culture. Yeah. Just spare me the sermon, okay? I'm not judging. I I did not feel guilty about it at the time, but lately, I do regret my actions. And now he's sick, and I. Mm. Uh, I can no longer pretend that he's not my son, and neither can she. No. This is a good one here. <laughs> Lord is working on this guy. You know, it says uh, the Holy Spirit convicts. Yep. Holy so they were, God. you know, he was saying, I didn't used to feel bad. Right. And now I do. That's why I like kind of chuckled. It was like, that's Holy Spirit conviction right He's there. He's getting a dose of the ghost, <laughs> you know. Getting into that spot where the glory is coming out. <laughs> So he's starting to feel it yep. and yep. and loves the rising too in a greater way, mm -hmm. which is really cool. Mm -hmm. It all goes together, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I think that's a fun portrayal here. I like I like this story of Gaius. It's, it's seeing this hard nut mm -hmm. cracking. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like it's fun to watch, mm -hmm. it's fun to play out. So but I like what we're saying about the Holy Spirit is drawing him. Mm -hmm. And it's awakening love and bringing conviction, mm -hmm. which is a really complicated, beautiful thing mm -hmm. when you think about it. Like mm -hmm. the Lord is like, he's so kind and he, he doesn't tolerate evil, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. like he's like, I want you and I want your sin gone. Mm. <laughs> that's good. That's good. So that's kind of what's happening here. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Shalom, Simon. What are you doing here? Did you sleep in? I didn't sleep at all. Why? Where's everyone? They left before dawn for the Decapolis. No one told you? If you ran, you could probably catch up with them. I'm not much of a runner. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Why is that funny, Sam? Were they setting that up? Why is that funny? Well, let's just say that uh, Simon doesn't win the race. <laughs> what race? <laughs> to the tomb <laughs> of resurrected Yeshua. <laughs> Who beats him to the tomb? John does. <laughs> <laughs> Man, foot race time. Huh? Right. <laughs> They're setting it up already. You caught it faster than I did. I was kind of like, oh. Long term. That's a, that's a good hey, Bible joke right there. Me and Simon are in the same boat here. <laughs> <laughs> Get the same boat, my rat. <laughs> <laughs> boat? <laughs> wow. I didn't get that one. <laughs> you were fishing for that. I was. I was. I was. <laughs> Hope just telling some bad Abba jokes hey here. <laughs> hey -o. Took the bait on that one. Hey <laughs> Hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> wow. <sighs> no. Should we go on or is yeah. this alluring? <laughs> <laughs> Man, that was good. You're searching for one, aren't I you? I am. <laughs> <laughs> can't think of another one. I can't either. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. You're welcome. Yeah. yeah you're welcome. Mm -hmm. So good to make the scales fall from my eyes. Hey, yo. Oh. <laughs> hey, you pick that up? <laughs> Simon, what are you doing here? I'm having a cup of water. I'm thirsty. Why aren't you on your way with the others? Did they tell you to stay behind and look after the women? I didn't know about the trip. I thought Andrew and Philip went and sorted it out. 
You're disconnected, Simon. You have no clue what's going on. You rebuke me, Zebedee? Abba? Don't play games with me, kid. Salome and I were at your bris. Abba! <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> He's saying that he was at his circumcision, so... Uh, br bris means like it, circumcision, yes, right, right. And so or it means really it means covenant, right? Uh, breed and uh, but it's talking about his circumcision. I've known you since you were just a little, you know, <laughs> since you were eight days old. That's right. <laughs> that's, that's, that's good. That's good. Also, like his cowhide satchel. Mm. It's, it's, it's getting me man bag, man bag. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Zebedee's got a little scarf. He does. It's, it's like a. It's like what is that? <laughs> He's ready to go. I yeah. mean, it's kind of like, you know, <clears throat> business in the mm -hmm. front and right. party in the back. Your teachings have reached us. So I have heard. He has not. What do you mean? He's deaf. Ayaba cannot hear and can barely speak. Uh, uh, uh. Telemachus, you are out of line. This is not why we need Jesus. Why shouldn't it be? Because, Rabbi, there are far greater problems right now than one man's ear. I can think of no better place to start. Didn't mean to spring this on you, I promise. I really didn't know. Please, Rabbi. I don't mean to disrespect I but... understand, son. of my voice. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Oh, it doesn't get much better than that. So there is something pretty cool here. So yeah. there's a, a Greek word here that's that says that this man is mute or sometimes it's translated as dumb, meaning like he can't mm -hmm. speak. And the Greek word is mogalalis and it's only used one time really in the New Testament. Wow. And then in the Septuagint, mm -hmm. it's only used one time. So the Septuagint is the Greek translation of the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. And so it's only used one time. So most uh, scholars think that this is definitely referring to this one instance cool. in and it's Isaiah chapter 35. Mm. And this is what it says. He will save you. I'm picking up in verse 4 at the end of it. Mm -hmm. Then the eyes of the blind will be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame will leap like a deer and the tongue of the mute, and there's the word, hmm. will sing. Oh, cool. For water will burst forth in the desert and streams in the wilderness. Wow. And so this whole chapter, Isaiah 35, is this <laughs> messianic yeah. uh, prophecy and declaration of what it's going to be like uh, in the messianic age when the Messiah comes. And so this is one of those messianic miracles yeah. if, that is happening. Right. And that's been prophesied about. That's so, so cool. Pretty cool. That's huh? a fun correlation yeah, there. I also find it like, I don't know, situations like this, guys never talked, guys never heard. Can you imagine the first thing you see here mm -hmm. talk about is Yeshua? Yeah. Ooh, right? ooh, that's good. Like the first words. It's a good he start. Heard. Good start. Yeshua's words? I mean, well, like, give me a break. Yeah, like, that's, that's awesome. That's ridiculous. I like that. <laughs> oh, and then, like, Eyes open for the first time, you get to see Yeshua. That's the mm. first thing you see. You gotta, be, that, that's got to be something you remember for the rest of your oh life. Oh, man. That'd be awesome. Right? How? By telling no one what happened. I strictly charge you to keep this quiet, which should be easy for you. You've had quite a lot of practice. <laughs> <laughs> now is not the time for this word to spread. 
That was the first joke he ever heard. <laughs> oh, shoot. That Wait, that's not in the Bible. Though. You're right. That's not in the Bible. That's okay. So, who knows? We like jokes. Yeah. The long-awaited Messiah finally arrives to cause even more trouble, and this is his army. Nabataeans. How many is that? Oh, Nabataeans. So the Nabataeans are like... Uh, traveling, uh, almost Bedouin-like. Like nomadic. Yeah, nomadic folks. And uh, like the famous Nabataean area is Petra okay. in modern-day Jordan. Yep. So, but they're known for their caravans and <laughs> things like that. I didn't know it, John. But before we all left on our two-by-two -two mission, we can save the child. And while we were gone. Oh, no, no, oh, no. I'm, I'm so sorry, brother. <laughs> when, when it happened, she almost died at home with the baby. There was so much damage, the doctor said she might never be able. But <laughs> tonight happened. Why didn't you tell us? Because I'm furious, John. I'm so angry. Look, he is who he says he is. I don't believe it. I know it. He's the first and the last. He can do anything. How could he let something whoa, like whoa, this? Whoa, whoa. That's not the right way to think about happen it. Happened to Eden. Happened to me. Let, let's keep going. You're not exempt, Simon. Remember, he said that in this world, bones will still break, hearts will still break. But he's making a way for people to access a better kingdom. He heals total strangers while I gave up everything for him. But that does not mean that your life will now be perfect. In fact, he said the complete opposite. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Life was a whole lot easier when we fished. She still could have lost a baby while you were a fisherman, Simon. We just wouldn't have anybody to turn to. He could have prevented it, and he did not. Sounds like we're close. It just reminds me of the passage where Yeshua says, in this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Mm -hmm. He doesn't say, you're not gonna have trouble. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he actually says, you will have trouble. Right. And that's that's where we live. Mm -hmm. That's where we are. Tribulations and, and challenges. Yeah. I might be quoting it wrong, but it's something like that. Oh, you, I think you got it. But take heart. And that's why the, you know, Paul and the other writers, they're saying look to the end. Keep your eyes set on mm -hmm. the return of Messiah when he makes all things new. Mm. Like set your hope fully upon him, right? Because mm -hmm. where we are at right now, it's like it's still messy. He said, it all depends on you. Running. Peter's leading. Peter's winning. <laughs> <laughs> the irony there, oh, huh? Man. But sometimes, you know, when you're a sprinter, you may lead at the beginning, but then, you know, you, you just. So you're saying Peter's more of a distance guy? Yeah, maybe so. Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> probably right. But if he's a, uh, he's a distance guy, maybe he would have won the race to the tomb? Maybe it's the other. Depends how far. Mm. If you like our videos, please help us spread a biblical messianic worldview by donating to Grafted. So he's like Gimli. Gimli? The dwarves are very fast over short periods. <laughs> what he says. What? Over short We're sprinters! Distances. Yeah, over short distances. Wow.